I, I had one other question that I was curious about. You mentioned 22 short films in Springfield, and I've, I think I've seen you on record as saying that Skinner is one of your favourite characters. The steamed hams scene, um, that, I think that goes for about two minutes or so. I'm wondering how long that actually took to write because every line in that is so refined and there's not a wasted syllable. Uh, it took a, one day for me to write. It took a, an afternoon for me to write. Like, it was... Really? I, I actually really wanted to write Chalmers. It wasn't Skinner. It was... I think that I, you probably have heard on the DVD commentary is the story of that episode, but it was... We loved that thing that they did at the end of the episode, The Front, where they had the adventures of Ned Flanders. Mm. You remember that? And it yeah, was just yeah, like yeah. A, yeah. One, joke, one joke thing. We thought that was so funny. And the only reason they ever did that was because that episode came in so short. And we yeah. never had that problem because our episodes always came in way too long. So finally, someone came up with the bright idea of, let's just do a whole episode of those shorts and tie them all together. And it was around the time that Pulp Fiction came out and we realized we could kind of have a story that kind of wove them all together a little bit. Um, and then all the writers just got to choose... Everybody got to choose their top three characters and and write. Um, and then we did something where we drew them out of the hat. I don't remember how it worked, but uh, my I only wanted to write Chalmers because I loved all those things that had come before where Chalmers had, you know, Skinner would lie to him and Chalmers would object briefly and then fall, and then believe it. And I just wanted to do a whole sequence of those things. Um, I think it took a while to come up with the idea but then it just, I think it all kind of unfolded real quickly uh, because the thing about that episode, that Steam Tams is there's not really any traditional jokes in there. You know, like there's not jokes mm-hmm. like Homer getting hit on the head and going dough <laughs> or, you know, or Bart call, calling Mo and, and giving some gag. Like it, it, there's very little. And I was actually afraid when I heard it in that people were going to say there's nothing funny about this. <laughs> and because there isn't anything traditionally funny about it it's just not it's like nine i think as ken said it's 13 interconnected lies that just become more and more preposterous but like it really is devoid of what you'd call traditional jokes yeah it's very very straight faced like the um you yeah know, it's an albany expression that sort of thing yeah that's that... why i'm so surprised that it's taken off and that it's gotten so popular over the years like at the time again this is a perfect example of like the whole internet thing and uh, the inter- the show having a second life due to the internet and also people having grown up on it because I don't recall anybody ever talking to me about Steam Tams for at least the first 10 years after it aired. So yeah. like, I don't think any, I don't recall anybody even noticing it. And it's only with the, with the, you know, internet and, and people it's taking on this kind of meme life of its own. Has it really taken off? Do you think it might help that people have become more accost- accustomed to watching TV comedy without laugh tracks? So they kind of, that's a scene where a traditional sitcom audience might need to be told where to laugh and might get a little bit lost. Whereas now with shows like Arrested Development, Community, Parks and Recreation and all that sort of thing, people are more able to find the joke themselves. I think that's definitely possible. That people are willing, at least a a larger proportion of people are willing to appreciate comedy that doesn't have traditional set up punchline rhythms, you know? 